Hello everyone, it's Heather Miche bringing you a how to change your multi-pure drinking water filter and a couple of key points to note to avoid leaks and not having a perfect installation. So let's get started with what you will see when you get your box that has your filter in it. It's got the protective bubble wrap and has a nice plastic airtight bag around it, just a real lightweight. Take that off. And this is just going to be a step-by-step -step to show you how to easily do this. I have an under-the-sink unit. You may have an under-the-sink or a countertop unit. And this is the Aquaversa model, and it takes the CB6 replacement filter. This wrap around the filter, this paper wrap, has perfectly clear and easy to follow directions. Has it in both Spanish and English. So pick your desired, preferred language. And then you can begin. Here's the English. The first thing you want to do is, of course, get your housing unit ready to take out your old filter cartridge and put in your new one. So let's get that detached and ready to go. So here's my unit, my below sink aquaversa and you have the white tubing here which is what goes to the feed water main over there so what i'm going to do is first off just bring it out closer to me so i can work on it a little more readily with some light and first off we need to shut off the water source to the unit. So we don't need that. There it goes. You want to get that nice and open. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the faucet for the multi pure because this is the filtered water only faucet that's coming up from the filter. So I'm just going to turn that on and let that bleed out the line. It'll just drip out a little bit. So it will take the water that's going actually from the tubing, the blue tubing here, is what goes up to the faucet. So this one right here. All right, so now let's get this disconnected. We're going to disconnect the tubing to the filter faucet. And we are going to also disconnect this feed feeder line here, which is bringing the water into the filter from the cold water source. Okay, get my hands free and I'll be back and show you how to do that. Okay, so we're back to disconnect the tubing that goes to the multi-pure faucet, which has the filtered water, and the tubing from the water input source. So let's do the faucet one first. So you see this little gray 
somewhat washer. What you need to do is push down on that. It's really got a lot of pressure on it. You can utilize a dull, like a butter knife to hold this washer down. That's what you need. You need to push that all the way down or you might have one of these handy dandy tools that is just great. I love this thing. And it's got the large size for the source tubing and then it has this small one for the faucet tube. So we're going to use the small one and you need to push down on that. You can hear it kind of click and feel it click and then have a dishpan or uh, a wide bowl available so that when you pull this out and you're just going to pull the tubing out you're going to have a little bit of drip but not much so you can just let that drip into the bowl so we got that off the tubing off for the faucet now we're going to use this big end larger end to push that down you can see that how that just loosened it up and then the tubing will go just pull out and we'll have that drip into that bowl as well so now our unit is not attached to anything and we can get it up into the sink and take it apart let those drip into the bowl there and go on to our next steps which is to take the housing container apart which will expose our used filter cartridge that we're going to remove and replace with the nice clean white one Next step is we're going to take this band off, which will open up the canister and simply just start unscrewing this big black knob. It's really important to be sure and change your filter at least once per year and it depends on which unit you have as well if you have the aqua mini you're going to be changing that at least every six months or sooner depending upon your water quality and source just get this all loosened up you can see the band is loosening and if this comes off just like that no problem and then you can see where the bar holds on to this channel and then off comes the band and we now have two halves and there's water inside the bottom half and that just gets poured out you can see the difference between the cartridge that's been in service for a year to the brand new sparkling white clean one. So now we're simply unscrewing the top half of the housing from the filter. Of course, that is what the filter screws into so we've got that all taken apart and the old cartridge i usually just let it drain i turn it upside down so the screw in end the top end is on the bottom and just let that drain a bit before i put it in the landfill and the cool thing about this even though it's not good for filtering water anymore. When it's in the landfill, it is still 
attracting and adsorbing, A-D-S-O-R-B-I-N-G, adsorbing contaminants even while it's in the landfill. So that's pretty cool. Next up is you want to wash your housing. You can see there's a little bit of biofilm kind of starting around the edge there. And you can see a little bit of sediment in the bottom. So we're just going to wash that with some warm, slightly soapy. You don't really need too much soap. It's not about the soap as much as the uh, just a little bit of the friction to get the scuzzies off of there. So just a bit of warm water. I'm just going to wipe this out really well to get that biofilm off. And that's all it takes. You can see it's nice and clean inside there now. So we'll rinse that. Get all that residue out of there from the water. And while we've got this bottom half, you want to make sure and also take off this o-ring. And that's going to be a little bit slimy. So you want to wipe around this spot here, just all the way around where the o-ring sits. And then with your slightly soapy rag, you just want to clean that o-ring so that doesn't have any biofilm or stuff on it so that is now clean let's just rinse this again where we washed for the o-ring and then you also want to clean the top half so wipe that out with your rag that, again, has just a small amount of like liquid dish soap on it. And then I like to do just a little bit around the gasket, the rubber gasket here. So that's all good. Rinse that out really well. don't need to wash the band, but those are all of our parts for the band that will connect the halves together. Next up, it is getting that fresh, clean filter into the housing. We don't need the bottom part yet, because what we're going to do is we're going to thread and this is really important, so pay close attention. This is a part you really want to pay attention to. Here's the threaded end that goes into the top part of the housing. The important part is you want to only hand tighten just to where it's barely snug. Do not crank, 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 make this thing just <clears throat> yanked on there. Just a snug fit, and that is good right there. So pay attention to that very important part. Okay, we've got the filter screwed in just hand tight, not cranked into the top of the housing unit right here. And now we want to replace the O-ring onto the bottom half. So just go all the way around to make sure that the O-ring is seated into the little channel around here. Okay. Now we take the top half and just set it into the bottom half. We take our band put that around so that it fits around the halves. Okay. Now taking this guy Come on. Actually, I was trying to do it the wrong way. Let's 
get this up on the counter. It'll be easier. It's good to have your filter unit on a non-skid, like this hefty towel, just so that it's not moving around quite so much. So I am putting that long screw bolt into the sleeve here. And notice I put the T portion into that notch. And then I'm going to attach the screw on bolt handle here. Now, before you start cranking, to tighten this up because this band is what holds the two halves together and keeps water from leaking out of your unit. You want to make sure that it's good all the way around as far as the band is covering both uh, the top lip and the bottom portions lip together before you start cranking. Now this one, this one you crank and really as tight as you possibly, possibly, possibly can. And you just keep cranking and cranking and cranking until you think you can't crank anymore. And then we'll be ready to reattach the tubing. All right, that's getting there. And even if you want to use some like gripper material, you know, like some of the shelving, uh, non slip stuff that works really well to get a good grip on this. Okay. We are yeah, a little bit more. We are just about there with as far as it is going to go. Next up, reattaching the tubing to the unit here. Next up, we're going to reattach our tubing from our source. And I've got it still dripping a little bit back there. And this is pretty straight ahead, but you need to get your tubing firmly seated into this and you can really feel it when it does get seated. You want to just push down really hard, wipe up any drips, and then you can see that's not going anywhere. Now we're going to take our tubing, the blue tubing that goes up to the filter faucet, and we're going to do the same thing, and that is put it down and just really seat it into there. You never want to try to just pull up without releasing these when you're, you won't be able to actually, but this just really get those seated really solidly in their spots and go around, dry all of the top of the unit, dry it off. And then we're going to now open up our water source line, which is right here. And we're going to feel the rush and hear the rush of that water coming in. And what it's doing now is it's feeding and filling the unit with water and it's pressurizing itself. The book. Okay. Let's get this out of here with the water that came out of the tubing. And I'll leave it out here in the light and then go to the next step, which is turning on the faucet to start pulling the water through the new filter. And we'll be getting the air out of the line as well as uh, letting it run. So let's go to that last step.
And now what's left is to just turn on our multi-pure faucet here. It's going to make noise and it's going to chug, chug, chug probably. Yep, see, it's getting the air out of the line. You don't have to just yank it all the way open. This is totally natural, this gray, dark gray water coming out because that's just tiny, loose carbon particles from the filter material, which is, as you probably know, solid carbon. So then I'm just going to ease it open all the way and it'll just push the air out. It really takes a long while before it stops chugging. Then you can always turn the faucet off, close it. Wait a moment, and then bring it back up again. There you go. Still a little bit of air in the line. And now, very important, this water you do not drink. This is not potable. It is fine for your plants, or if you want to collect it. I often do this in the summertime. I just let it run into a big bowl or a dish pan, and then take it out and use it to water plants outside. So it's early, early, early spring right now don't necessarily have any plants that are dry outside because it's been raining. But now what you want to do is set your timer for 30 minutes. You're going to let the water run through your filter faucet for 30 minutes to clear all of that loose carbon particle matter out. So let's do that. Okay, we're going to keep that water running through the filter, that wastewater, for that full 30 minutes that we set our timer for. And while you're having that wastewater run through, be sure to come down and check your unit. It has its nice new filter cartridge in it. And make sure there are no leaks. No leakage, especially being, and I don't see any. You want to wipe, you know, wipe the top of your unit with a dry cloth. And also on the ground of your kitchen cabinet. That way you're starting from scratch to form a dry situation. And then just check it periodically down here at your connections for any leaks that would show up around here. And certainly around here as well, the band, but we're all good there. So, there you are. And once you've had several minutes, I'd say, gosh, let it go 15 minutes uh, into your 30 minute timer to check if there's any leakage here at your connections. And then when you're feeling confident that it's not going to give you any leakage, if you did all the steps, you won't have any leakage, you can put it back into its position under your kitchen sink or wherever it is you have your unit installed. And that's it. Now you've got great, healthful, pure water, confidence that you've got great water for the next year or whatever your filter frequency change time is. And congratulations. You've just changed your multi pure filter. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for having a multi pure drinking water system and safeguarding you and your family's health. 
stay tuned on my channel here for more healthful water tips and other healthy, sustainable living tips. Please do like the video, especially if it was helpful for you. Share it with any other multi-pure friends. Comment, ask questions in the comment section, and please do subscribe. I'd love to have you be part of the Heather Miche Healthy Sustainable Living Tips Tribe here on YouTube. Keep great care of yourself.